And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 1.29 Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we're going to revisit a classic dish that I bet many of you have never made from scratch. I bet you have opened a can put a little bit of ground beef with it, and eating it that way. Well, I think it's better to make it homemade. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about Sloppy Joe's. All-time favorite lunchroom kid favorite meal. So that's what we're going to make today. We're going to make homemade Sloppy Joe's. And to go along with that, you need a cookie. And we're going to make one of my favorite cookies, and that is ginger snaps. So first thing I'm going to do is preheat a skillet. A skillet that has got some, uh, you know, a little bit of depth to the sides so we can simmer the sauce. We're going to preheat that on medium heat. And I'm going to chop a green pepper. I'm only going to need half of the green pepper. And I'm going to chop it kind of fine. Now, I love Sloppy Joes, but I am not a fan of the kind that you just open that canned mix, add a little bit of beef, and serve it over hamburger buns. I, you know, I used to like that, and I don't know, my taste buds, I guess, changed, and I thought, I really like Sloppy Joes. Now, how can I make these homemade to where I will want to eat them, and they taste delicious, and this is an easy, easy recipe that really, truly doesn't take that much longer than opening that can and adding the ground beef. And this is much better for you because you're not dealing with all of those preservatives and things. So I have half of a green pepper that I'm sauteing a little bit on the fine side. I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of canola oil. I'm just using canola oil in this recipe. You could use vegetable oil if you wanted to. Let me get my little scooper here. Let me find my little scooper, there it is. And then I love these little things to help you move your items. Add my green pepper to my skillet. I'm going to saute some green pepper and a little bit of onion in my oil before I start adding the beef. So let's just get those green peppers sauteing up a little bit. I've told you before that I, I, I typically don't mind chopping onions, but I have switched from contacts to glasses, and I'm finding that I don't do as well with the onion chopping. I will have tears streaming down my face. So I bought one of these little handy-dandy little choppers that you've all seen in the stores. I love this thing. It is wonderful for chopping an onion. Just cut it in half, put it on there, boom, there you go. Two seconds later, you've got chopped onion. Love this tool. So if you, have, if you cry while chopping onions, like we all do at times, get you one of these. They're available everywhere. They come with two different size blades, and you can switch them in and out depending on how fine you want your stuff, and boom. There you go. Your onions are chopped, and you're not crying. So we've got one medium onion that we're going to add to the dish here. We're going to get that going. Let me move this out of the way. And that's our onion and our green pepper. You want those diced kind of fine. Get those sauteing up. You want them softened. We're not looking for caramelization here. We're looking for the vegetables to soften. It's going to take just a couple of minutes. To that, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of kosher salt. I use kosher salt for pretty much everything. I, I occasionally will use a, the regular table salt in a recipe, but for the most part, I always use kosher salt and freshly ground pepper to your taste. I'm not a person, if you've watched much of this show, I don't over salt my food. I, I'm just not a person who, who eats a lot of salt. I do, however, like a lot of pepper. 
So you use however much that you like. I only used about a teaspoon. But if you like more, by all means, add a little more. Now we've got our vegetables going. That's half of a green pepper and a one little medium-sized onion. I'm gonna add, now this package is just a little bit over a pound. I'm using the 90% lean ground beef. I like it better for these kinds of recipes. If I'm doing something that it's gonna drip away like a hamburger, I prefer the ground chuck, the 80%. But in a dish like this where I'm not gonna be draining it, I like to use the, the 90 or higher. You could use 93% lean ground beef. You could, if you wanted to, substitute turkey. You could very easily do this very same recipe up to this point and just use ground turkey instead of ground beef and it would be simply delicious. Now, to this mixture, while this is browning, I have discovered that when you are adding spices, to a mixture like this, whether you're doing hamburgers, or, or not hamburgers, but spaghetti sauce, or tacos, or any kind of mixture where you have a ground meat in it, I find if you add your spices at this point, instead of later into the liquid, the spices kind of bloom, and you bring out the flavors of the spices more. So I'm gonna add to this mixture about a tablespoon of just regular chili powder, that we all have in our cabinets. And because I like things a little bit hot, I'm gonna add about half a teaspoon of ground cayenne pepper. If you don't like your food hot, you do not have to add the cayenne pepper. If you don't have cayenne pepper, and you still want it a little spicy, you could add you know, three or four drops of your hot sauce that you have in your refrigerator. That would be delicious in this recipe. You could do it either way. But I do like a little bit of heat. If you're making this for children, you know, you might want to kind of tame that depending on the child. Some kids like hot food, some don't. Now, you do not want to get this mixture you really, really brown to the point of starting to caramelize and crisp up. You only want to cook this to the point that it loses its pink color. You want that texture of the softer meat. So we're just gonna let this go until we lose that pink color in the beef, and then we will add in our tomato products. I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm just gonna keep browning this up. When I come back, we're gonna wrap this sauce up. We're gonna let it be simmering while we make our ginger snaps. I'll be right back with you in just a minute. Hey, and welcome back. Now to our mixture, I'm gonna add a couple of cloves of garlic, just minced garlic. I'm going to add to this. Now you see this mixture, how it's just barely brown, but we don't see any of that dark caramelization. We just don't want that. We only want the mixture to be barely brown. I'm gonna add about a cup of tomato puree. Now this is not tomato sauce. It's not diced tomatoes. It's called tomato puree. It's available in your, in your grocery store where you buy the tomato sauce and the canned tomatoes, but look for tomato puree. What it is, is crushed up tomatoes that they have evaporated out part of the liquid. So it's a thicker consistency than like a tomato sauce. I'm also gonna add about half a cup of ketchup. Let's stir that up and see where we are. You might need to add a little tiny bit of uh, water, but I don't know. Let's see. I don't, I don't think so on this recipe. I think I'm good to go. If your mixture seems to be a little bit dry, then add up to like a fourth of a cup, maybe two ounces of water. But I honestly don't think I need to, at this point, add any water to this. Mmm, smells so good. I wish you could smell this dish. 
Now, I'm going to turn that down. I'm going to let that simmer uncovered, but I don't want it splattering all over every place. This is a wonderful little tool. You can find these everywhere. So I'm going to put a little splatter guard that'll keep it from making a mess, but yet let all of the excess liquid evaporate out. Just turn that down, let that simmer about 20 minutes, and you will have a delicious, delicious sloppy joe for your family to eat. Now, let's get started on our cookies. I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. I have got two, as you can see in here, two sticks of butter that is softened butter. It's very important whenever you're cooking or baking cookies or breads or anything like that, that your butter be softened. You cannot take it straight out of the refrigerator and use it. You have to let it set ideally, like let it set out overnight uh, you can soften it in the microwave for just, you know, maybe 10, 15 seconds at the very most if you need to. But you want room temperature butter. To this, we're going to cream this butter. We're going to add half a cup of light brown sugar and half a cup of dark brown sugar. Now, if you don't have one or the other of those, you can use one cup of all light brown or one cup of the dark brown. I like the mixture because the dark brown has got more molasses in it and it has a little bit of a stronger flavor. So I like to use half a cup of each, but you know, don't go out and buy a special container of the dark brown sugar if you don't have any. Just use all light brown sugar. We're going to cream this together. This is an important step. If you don't have one of these stand mixtures, you can use the little hand mixer and just cream it together for a couple of minutes until it's light and fluffy. Okay, now while our butter and sugars are creaming, let's get our dry ingredients together. I've got one and three-fourths of a cup of all-purpose flour. I have got about half a teaspoon of baking soda, about a teaspoon of, or excuse me, half a teaspoon of salt. I have one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, or half a teaspoon, excuse me, of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of ground ginger, about a fourth of a teaspoon of ground cloves, because ground cloves is one of those spices that's very, very potent. You don't need much of that. I like fresh nutmeg. I'm going to use about a fourth of a teaspoon or so of fresh nutmeg. So always keep your little, these little seeds last forever, the little fresh nutmeg, and there is a world of difference in the flavor. But if you only have the pre-ground, that's okay too. About a fourth of a teaspoon of that. Let's whisk that together. And that's your dry ingredients, that simple. Our butter and uh, sugars are looking real good, so let's add one egg to the mixture, to the, this, in baking, this would be called the wet ingredients. So add in one egg. And like I said, if you don't have a stand mixer, that's okay. You can use the little hand mixer. Works perfectly fine. Let's turn that up. Get that egg beaten in. Now let me show you real quickly what I mean by beaten butter. You want to get your butter, if you keep your fingers out of it, to this stage. Let me show you real quick. You see how that's really light and fluffy and airy? That's exactly what you want. Now, on low speed, if you're using your stand mixer, it's number one. If you're using the little hand mixer, it's number one. On low speed, a little bit at a time, add in your dry ingredients. You want it to be about in thirds. Let it incorporate all that flour before you add any more, just takes a minute. But if you dump it all in at once, you will have tough cookies. I don't completely understand the science behind it. It has something to do with absorbing the proteins, absorbing the liquid. But I promise you, you will have tough cookies. So don't dump it all in at one time. Do it in like one third installments or even one fourth installments and let all the flour get absorbed before you add any more of your flour. And I'm good to go there. Add in all of that. Turn it up just to the next level here and get it all incorporated until you get a soft dough and I'll show you what I mean. 
And there we go. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Take your paddle attachment. Don't waste that cookie dough. I could eat this cookie dough right like that. I won't, but I could. See what I'm talking about, how I've got just like a soft dough? That's exactly what you want. Now get all of that dough off your paddle. It'll be a little bit sticky, that's okay. I'll show you how we're gonna do these cookies. Ginger snaps are one of my favorite cookies. I love them. Absolutely love them. I love store-bought and I love homemade. One of those cookies that I can eat. Love them with a cup of good, 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 good coffee. Now, scrape down the sides of your bowl because sometimes in these stand mixers especially, you can have a little bit of flour that sticks to the sides of the, of the thing. That's okay. Now, we've got a little bit of just regular granulated sugar. And I have two baking sheets because you don't want to crowd your cookies. I'm, I'm using parchment paper. If you don't have parchment paper, that's okay. Spray your pans with nonstick spray. And I like to spray my parchment paper because there's not a lot of fat in this particular dough. Let me take off my ring and my watch because this is a messy little job. But that's okay. We like it. Now I lost a spoon. There we go. Two spoons. You want about one inch balls. Take it in your hand, form a little one inch ball, and then roll it in the sugar about two inches apart on your cookie sheet. Let me show you again. However big or small you like your cookies, I, I like to, you know, about one inch is, is good. Just like that. It's a little bit sticky. That's okay. Put it in your sugar. Cover it all over with the granulated sugar. You could use the raw sugar if you wanted to. You know that um, sugar in the raw as you find it in the stores or Demera sugar would be delicious on this. You could use either one you wanted. Just take it. Roll it in the dough. Good job to do with your kids. You want them about two inches apart. I'm going to take a quick break. I'm just going to keep rolling these cookies. When I come back, we're going to finish up our sauce, and then we're going to eat. I'll be right back with you in just a minute. All right, now our cookies are in the oven. Our sloppy joe mixture is done. I've just got it down as low as my stove will go, and I took a taste, and let me tell you, you are going to love this recipe. To serve alongside our sloppy joe, we are going to make some sauteed baby carrots. Couldn't be easier. We just bought a bag of the little baby carrots that you buy in the grocery store, a couple of teaspoons or so of canola oil, vegetable oil, or olive oil, whatever you have on hand. We're going to add these, kind of medium-high heat. I'm just going to saute them quickly because I don't like my vegetables really, really, really soft. I like them to have just a little tiny bit of crunch to them. Let me get a little pan. Single layer, just kind of let them go for just a couple of minutes here. Let's add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. Now with your cookies, those ginger snaps, you will want to make sure that you rotate your pans about halfway through your cook time. Takes about 12 to 14 minutes, but about halfway through, put your bottom pan on the top and your top pan on the bottom. And let's do that right now. Let's come over to the stove. Let me grab another pot holder here. And let's rotate our cookies. Oh, look how good they look. Take your bottom pan out and put, just so that the bottoms, the reason that we do this is so that the bottoms don't overcook. And let them go for just a few short more minutes. And there you go. Let's get our carrots going. And let me show you this sloppy joe mixture. This is so good. You have got to try this recipe. 
all we did was saute half an onion or half of a green pepper in one kind of smallish to medium sized onion, two teaspoons of garlic, some chili powder, some cayenne pepper. Remember to put your spices in your beef mixture before you add your tomatoes in your liquid product. We added some tomato puree, some tomato ketchup. If your mixture seems to be a little dry, you can add a little bit of water, like maybe two ounces or so of water, but I didn't need to do that today. Salt and pepper, saute it together, and then turn it down to simmer and let the excess liquid evaporate. You see how this mixture is just a tiny, tiny bit on the dry side? That's what you want because we're gonna serve this over hamburger buns and you don't want a big soupy mess. This is not meant to be a stew. It's not meant to be anything like that. You wanna leave it uncovered. I used a splatter guard just to keep my stove from becoming a mess. But you wanna simmer it during that 20 minutes or so uncovered to let the excess liquids evaporate so that you have got a moist, but yet, you know, not a soupy mixture. I'm gonna serve it over just plain hamburger buns that I like the, the sesame seed kind, whatever kind of bread you like, whatever kind of hamburger bun that your family likes. You could use white bread if you wanted to. You could use any kind of bread or toast that your family likes. I don't like my buns toasted. To me, a sloppy joe is supposed to have a soft bun on the top. So let's plate this baby up, and I cannot wait to eat. So very, very good. Take your bottom part of your bun, and we're gonna add just a little bit. Meant to be messy, folks. That's what it is called. It's called a sloppy joe. So if it spills out a little bit, you know what? That's the way it's supposed to be. And there you go. What a delicious little lunch or dinner for your children, for your family. We love them. I mean, really, who doesn't love sloppy joes? What's not to love? Like I said, you could absolutely, if you wanted to substitute turkey in that recipe, you could substitute ground turkey for the ground beef or ground chicken or even ground pork if you wanted to. You could take this basic recipe and you could change it up a thousand different ways. You could make it a little more Mexican. You could make it... Uh, you know, a little spicier, a little more Cajun-y by adding different spices and things to it. That's just a basic Sloppy Joe recipe. You can change it up however your family likes it to go. These carrots are just sauteing up very briefly, very quickly. I still want them to have just a little bit of a bite to them. I don't want them to be really, really soft. Let's see how we go. I think we Probably need a minute more, but let's try. Just a minute more. Mmm, I love carrots. They're hot. But so good. You see how the carrot just kind of, you see how it starts getting that, just that little bit of caramelization to it? Adds a whole nother flavor. This is one of those recipes too. You could change it up a thousand different ways. You could add honey, you could add a little nutmeg, you could add a little bit of ginger, you could add whatever flavors your family likes. You could just change it up however you want it to. Today, I'm just going to add at the end, when they're done, I'm going to add just a little tiny bit of sesame oil. Okay, now our carrots are done. I'm going to drizzle just about a teaspoon of sesame oil over top of my carrots. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I just love the flavor of sesame oil. It's a dark, toasty uh, kind of flavor, and I love it. It's just delicious. Now, carrots are done, so let's put some of those on our plate with our wonderful sloppy joe, homemade sloppy joe. Yum, yum. Doesn't that just look delicious? I cannot wait to eat. Here's our cookies. Now, our cookies, you know, we, we did not flatten them. Don't flatten them. Just leave them in the balls that you've rolled in sugar. Put them on your cookie sheet. Let them go for about 12 to 14 minutes until they look like this. And let them cool for just a second. And then we're going to put them on a cookie rack, a cooling cookie rack. That pan's going to be hot. So let me, let's put our cookies on our cooling rack here. 
Oh, I can't. Let me move this out so you can see. Oh, they smell so, so very, very good. I love ginger snaps. This is one of my favorite cookies. And you want to remove them to a cooling rack and let them cool completely if you can wait. You know, sometimes I've been known not to wait too long with cookies. <laughs> Who can wait, right? But there you go. There's your wonderful little homemade sloppy joe with some sauteed carrots on the side and our delicious homemade ginger snaps. Just let these cool while you're eating. And I'll see you next time on Everyday Man. Thank you for watching Everyday Mana with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Mana, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.